In today's video, we show you a complete guide to grow the best cabbages in your garden. And since this is a complete guide, these are the things we will be looking at in our video today. Let's start with the planting technique. Cabbage seeds can be sowed directly into the soil, but I recommend that you start your seeds indoors 6 to 8 weeks before transplanting your seedlings. This gives a head start to growing cabbages. I'm using a 6 cell seed starting kit here with some perlite and peat moss as the growing medium. And these are the cabbage seeds. As you can see, very tiny. Just put one or two seeds per cell in the seed starting kit. And once the seeds germinate, the seedlings come out, you can transplant them into containers or onto raised beds. Now, if you are growing cabbage in warm areas like California, for example, where the winters are mild, you can grow cabbages either in early spring or you can grow them in fall or even in the winters. Cabbage is a cool season crop and it grows very well in cool temperatures. So you can see here that after a few weeks, you can see the seedlings emerge. And at this stage, they do need some liquid fertilizer. You can use a weak fertilizer like compost tea or just use fish emulsion or seaweed. Or if you're using synthetic fertilizers, use an all-purpose synthetic fertilizer at half the dose. Now, your seedlings will look like this when they're ready to be transplanted. Now I want to show you the container mix that I use to grow cabbages. Here is one part vermiculite, which is a high draining, moisture retaining mix. And to that we add one part compost. Now in my one part compost, I've also added some chicken manure that will help add a lot of nutrients to the soil. And make sure you break up the compost very well. And to this mix, I'm going to add one part of peat moss. So essentially what we have done is we have added about 30% peat moss, 30% compost with some manure and 30% vermiculite. So this is a great mix for growing cabbages. During hot days, the vermiculite will help retain the moisture in the soil. And if you don't have vermiculite or you think vermiculite is expensive, you can substitute with perlite. So once you substitute with perlite, the watering requirements go a little higher because perlite-based container mixes dry up quickly, but the vermiculite will help retain the moisture for the soil. And now let's look at how we plant our seedlings. So this is a standard 16-inch high, 16-inch wide container and cabbages grow the best in this kind of a container. So if you are looking to grow cabbages in a decently sized container, this is the container size you should look for. It has about seven gallons of soil. And I also have some five gallon pots here that you can grow cabbage in and they grow very well in these five gallon pots as well. So let's look at transplanting these seedlings into these five gallon pots. Now, although you can direct sow cabbages, I highly recommend that you start your seed so that your seedlings, as you're seeing here, when you're transplanting them, they are very healthy. There is no risk of them getting destroyed by cutworms or any other insects because by the time the seedlings reach this size, there's a much better chance that they will survive whether you're planting them in containers, in raised beds, or in the ground. And it also gives you a head start into the growing season. While there are other veggies growing in your garden, you can still prepare your seedlings. And cabbages must be grown in full sun. They need about 6 to 8 hours of sunlight every day. And as far as watering goes, it really depends on the temperatures in your area. If you have hot, sunny days, water your cabbage plants daily. But during cold winter days or cloudy days, when the soil can return adequate moisture, 
you need to water your cabbage plants maybe 2 to 3 times a week so that's a good guideline for watering your cabbages now let's take a look at the different types of cabbage you can grow in your garden the first type of cabbage is called the savoy cabbage the savoy cabbage is a very different kind of cabbage from your traditional cabbage because it has a lot of these curly leaves that form the cabbage now the taste of the savoy cabbage is distinctively different from the regular cabbage and i like the taste of savoy cabbage and a lot of other people do too so as you can see here they look a lot different than traditional cabbage but are great to grow in your garden and the second type of cabbage that we will look at is the red cabbage this cabbage comes in various varieties the one that you're looking at right now is called the red acre cabbage and it's a great variety to grow in your home garden especially in containers and red cabbages have more nutritional value than traditional cabbages and the next variety of cabbage that you can grow in your garden are the giant variety of cabbages and these cabbages have very high water and fertilizer requirements but once you do grow them successfully they produce very large heads and taste wise i did not like this variety a lot it produces rather bland tasting vegetables but some people do like the taste as well so try growing it and see if it is something that you like this cabbage does produce larger heads than traditional cabbages and some cabbages are classified according to the shape of their head and the one that you're seeing right now is the long or pointed head kind of a cabbage now this is not really a true pointed head variety there are some varieties that actually look like a triangle almost like a pointed head that's growing and i'll try growing that cabbage variety as well but this cabbage should give you an idea of what i'm talking about as you can see here the head looks quite pointed and not round at all and this is the round head cabbage and to check if your cabbage is ready for harvest just try to feel on the cabbage head and if it's hard and it doesn't give in easily they are ready for harvest now let's look at the fertilizer requirement for cabbages now cabbage as you can see here is a leafy vegetable it does produce a lot of leaves and then even the bud is actually comprised of leaves so it needs a high nitrogen fertilizer you can use one of the all purpose vegetable fertilizers for growing cabbage i usually mix in a lot of organic matter in the soil when i'm growing the cabbages and then add some fertilizer as the plant grows so maybe every one month or so if you're using liquid fertilizers and then if you're using a slow release fertilizer you can just sprinkle them on the sides of your cabbage at least two times during the growing season once when you plant the cabbages and once the cabbages have grown for about two months or so and we're going to be harvesting this cabbage these cabbages were growing in our 5 gallon container and as you can see the cabbages are not huge the heads are decently sized but uh, please note that if you're growing cabbages at home you're not looking for a very big cabbages what you're looking for is decently sized heads that are not too small so that you can use them as needed in your cooking so these cabbage heads that are formed from this 5 gallon containers are about medium sized and that is why the 5 gallon container is one of the better containers that you can use to grow cabbage easily and we are harvesting some more cabbage here these are again the smaller containers the 5 gallon containers and as you can see we are getting a good quality cabbage from all these 5 gallon containers that we use to grow our cabbage so all in all if you're growing cabbage and don't have space like raised beds or ground to grow cabbage you can easily grow it in containers now if your cabbage plant is showing poor growth you need to check two things first check the nutrients 
make sure your plant is getting adequate nutrition, sunlight and water. And the next thing you want to check is your soil pH. Now for cabbage, the ideal soil pH is what you see on your screen here. It's between 6.5 to 6.8. And using a pH tester for the soil, you can measure soil pH. I will provide a link to the product in the video description below. And now for some of the insects that can attack your cabbage plants. Here you can see cabbage aphids on the sides of the leaves and you can easily get rid of them by spraying them with soapy water or just using a water hose to wash them off the plant. You don't really need to use any chemicals or pesticides to control aphids. And the next type of insect is the cabbage looper which is a chewing kind of an insect which is commonly found on cabbage leaves and to get rid of it you can just hand pick them or use Bt which is an organic insecticide to get rid of this insect. Slugs. Slugs do cause a lot of damages in cabbage plants because they make holes in their leaves. So you can either hand pick them at night or use a snail and slug bait that contains iron phosphate. Now iron phosphate is safe for organic gardening and this is the only snail and slug repellent that you should use in your garden. And just sprinkle this around your raised beds or your plants and it will take care of the snails. Now let's look at growing cabbages in raised beds. Now as I've mentioned earlier the more space and the more soil you use to grow cabbage the better and bigger the cabbage heads turn out. So in raised beds you definitely have more soil than your 5 gallon containers. And here you can see that the cabbage head is a lot larger. And this is the regular cabbage variety, it's not a giant variety. But since we have a lot of space, as you can see here, there's no competition from other plants around it. And it gets all the food, nutrition and sunlight that it needs. We are producing some really good sized cabbage heads here. So as you can see a great harvest and since this was one of our best cabbage harvests, we thought of weighing this cabbage and seeing how much it weighs. And as you can see here, this is a four pound cabbage. It's an amazing cabbage harvest that we got. And now for an easy cabbage recipe. So there you go folks, that was our complete growing guide on cabbages. If you like this video, do give us a thumbs up and if you have any comments or questions, do put them in the comment box below. We'll see you again soon. Happy gardening.